In the fast-growing world of mobile app development, Flutter has emerged as a popular framework for creating beautiful and high-performance applications. This video will guide you through the top 25 interview questions and answers related to Flutter. These questions are designed to help both beginners and experienced developers prepare effectively for their job interviews. By addressing key concepts and practical examples, this video aims to enhance your confidence and knowledge in Flutter development. 1. What is Flutter and what are its main advantages? Flutter is an open-source UI software development kit created by Google, used for building natively compiled applications for mobile, web, and desktop from a single codebase. Its main advantages include fast development with hot reload, which allows developers to see changes instantly without losing the app state. Flutter offers a rich set of pre-designed widgets that facilitate creating beautiful UIs. It also boasts high performance due to direct compilation to native code. Additionally, Flutter's strong community support and extensive documentation make it an appealing choice for developers. 2. Explain the difference between stateful and stateless widgets in Flutter. In Flutter, stateful widgets maintain state that can change during the widget's lifecycle. They are useful for UI that needs to update based on user interactions or asynchronous data. When the state changes, the widget rebuilds with the new data. Stateless widgets, on the other hand, do not maintain any state. They are immutable and get rebuilt only when their parent widget changes. This makes them suitable for static content that doesn't require updates. Choosing between them depends on whether the widget state needs to change over time or remains constant throughout its existence. 3. What is the purpose of the PubSpec YAML file in a Flutter project? The PubSpec YAML file serves as the configuration file for Flutter projects. It defines metadata about the project, such as its name, description, version, and dependencies. When adding packages or plugins, developers list them under the dependencies section, allowing the Flutter package manager, pub, to fetch and include them in the project. This file also manages assets like images and fonts, ensuring they are properly bundled with the application. Maintaining this file is crucial for project organization, making it easier to manage dependencies and project assets efficiently. 4. Describe the Flutter widget tree and how it relates to the element tree. The Flutter widget tree represents the structure of the UI components in a Flutter application. Each widget is an immutable description of part of the user interface, and they are organized hierarchically. When the UI is built, Flutter creates corresponding instances called elements. The element tree acts as a bridge between the widget tree and the rendering layer, maintaining the state and lifecycle of the widgets. Elements are mutable and can change as the widget tree updates, allowing for efficient rebuilds and rendering. Changes in widgets lead to updates in elements, ensuring the UI remains responsive and performant. 5. What is Hot Reload in Flutter and how does it differ from Hot Restart? Hot Reload allows developers to quickly see the results of code changes in their Flutter applications without losing the current application state. When a developer makes changes to the code and saves it, Hot Reload injects the updated code into the running app. This feature is particularly useful during the development process as it speeds up the workflow and enhances productivity. Hot Restart, on the other hand, reloads the entire application and resets its state. This means that while changes are applied, any current state data is lost. Hot Reload is ideal for UI changes, while Hot Restart is useful for changes that affect the app's state or initialization. 6. Explain the concept of state management in Flutter. What are some popular state management solutions? State management in Flutter refers to the way an application manages its state, which includes data that can change over time. Effective state management ensures that the UI reflects the current state of the application. Popular solutions include Provider, a lightweight package that uses inherited widget to provide a way to manage state across the widget tree. Riverpod, an improvement over Provider that offers a more robust and flexible approach to state management. Block, business logic component, this pattern separates business logic from the UI, promoting a clear architecture. GetX, a powerful solution that combines state management, dependency injection, and root management in a simple way. Choosing the right approach depends on the complexity and requirements of the application. 7. What is the difference between const and final keywords in Dart? In Dart, both const and final are used to declare variables that are immutable, but they serve different purposes. A variable declared with final can only be set once and its value can be determined at runtime. This means that you can assign it a value that is not known until the program is executed. On the other hand, 
const is used for compile time constants. Variables declared with const must have their values known at compile time, and they cannot change. This distinction allows const to create deeply immutable objects, while final offers flexibility during runtime. 8. How do you handle asynchronous operations in Flutter? Explain the use of future and async, await. In Flutter, handling asynchronous operations is essential for tasks such as fetching data from AP as or performing I.O. operations without blocking the UI. The future class represents a potential value or error that will be available at some point. You can use the async keyword in a function to enable asynchronous execution, allowing you to use await for any future. When you await a future, the function pauses execution until the future completes, making your code cleaner and easier to read. This approach helps maintain smooth UI responsiveness while waiting for operations to finish. 9. What are mixins in Dart and how are they used in Flutter? Mixins in Dart are a way to reuse a class's code in multiple class hierarchies. They allow you to define methods and properties that can be shared across different classes without having to create a base class. In Flutter, mixins are commonly used for adding functionality such as animation or state management to widgets. A class can mix in one or more other classes to enhance its behavior. This promotes code reusability and helps keep classes focused on their specific purpose, making the code base cleaner and easier to maintain. 10. Describe the difference between main axis alignment and cross axis alignment in Flutter layouts. In Flutter layouts, main axis alignment and cross axis alignment are properties used to align children within a flex widget, such as row or column. Main axis alignment controls the alignment of children along the main axis, which is horizontal for row and vertical for column. It can take values like start, end, center, space between, and space around. On the other hand, Cross-axis alignment determines the alignment of children along the cross-axis, which is vertical for row and horizontal for column. It allows for alignment options such as start, end, center, and stretch. Understanding these properties is crucial for building responsive layouts. 11. What is the purpose of the build context in Flutter? The build context in Flutter serves as a reference to the location of a widget within the widget tree. It provides essential information about the widget's position, including its parent and child relationships, which are crucial for rendering and updating the UI build context allows widgets to access inherited widgets, such as theme data or localization settings, promoting a more modular structure. It is often passed to methods like build, and can be used to navigate between screens or retrieve data from providers, ensuring that widgets can effectively communicate with one another in the app. 12. Explain the concept of keys in Flutter. When and why would you use them? Keys play a crucial role in Flutter for preserving the state of widgets across rebuilds. They help differentiate between widgets when the widget tree is updated. Using keys is essential when you have a list of items that can change order or when you need to maintain the state of a specific widget, like a form field, during rebuilds. Commonly, global key is used for stateful widgets that need to be accessed from outside their build context, while value key is useful for uniquely identifying widgets based on a specific value. Keys ensure Flutter can efficiently manage the widget tree. 13. How do you implement navigation and routing in Flutter? In Flutter, navigation and routing can be implemented using the Navigator widget. The Navigator manages a stack of root objects, which represent screens in the app. To navigate to a new screen, use Navigator. Push, context, material page root, builder. Context, equals greater than new screen. To return to the previous screen, use Navigator.pop, context. For named roots, define them in the material app widgets roots property, then navigate using navigator. Push named, context, root name. This approach allows for structured and manageable navigation throughout your application. 14. What are Flutter packages and plugins? How do you add them to your project? Flutter packages are libraries that provide reusable code to enhance app development. They can include functionalities like UI components, state management, or network requests. Plugins, on the other hand, enable access to native device features like GPS, camera, or sensors, bridging the gap between Flutter and platform-specific functionalities. To add a package or plugin to your project, you need to update the pubspec, YAML file. Under the Dependencies section, specify the package name and version. After saving the file, run Flutter Pub get in the terminal to install the package and make it available for use in your app. 15. Describe the lifecycle methods of a stateful widget. A stateful widget has a defined lifecycle that consists of several methods, allowing for management of its state. 
The key methods include create state, creates the mutable state for this widget. In its state, called once when the state is created, it's used for initializing data or state related tasks. DID change dependencies, invoked when the widget's dependencies change, such as when an inherited widget updates. Build describes the part of the user interface represented by this widget. It must return a widget, DID update widget, called when the widget configuration changes. Set state notifies the framework that the state has changed, triggering a rebuild. Dispose cleans up resources when the widget is removed from the tree. 16. What is the difference between list view and list view, builder and flutter? The main difference between list view and list view, builder lies in performance and memory usage. List view creates all its children at once, which can lead to high memory consumption if the list is long. This is suitable for smaller lists where all items need to be displayed immediately. In contrast, list view, builder constructs items on demand using a builder function, creating only the visible items. This approach is more efficient for large datasets, as it reduces memory usage and improves scrolling performance. For dynamic lists, list view, builder is typically the preferred choice. 17. How do you handle device orientation changes in Flutter? To handle device orientation changes in Flutter, you can use the orientation builder widget, which rebuilds its child whenever the orientation changes between portrait and landscape. In the builder function, you can check the current orientation using media query of context orientation. Depending on the orientation, you can return different layouts or widgets. Alternatively, you can listen to orientation changes using the widget's binding observer to respond to lifecycle changes. This approach allows for more complex handling, such as saving the state or adjusting layouts dynamically based on orientation. 18. Explain the concept of inherited widgets in Flutter. Inherited widgets are a way to efficiently propagate information down the widget tree in Flutter. They allow you to share data across different parts of your application without having to pass data explicitly through constructors. An inherited widget holds data that can be accessed by its descendant widgets, making it easier to manage state and configuration. When the data changes, the framework automatically rebuilds the widgets that depend on that inherited widget. This mechanism is particularly useful for implementing themes, localization, or state management solutions, as it promotes a clean separation of concerns in your code. 19. What are Flutter's build modes and when would you use each one? Flutter has three primary build modes, debug, profile, and release. Debug mode is used during development and provides a rich set of debugging tools. It allows for hot reload, enabling developers to see changes in real time. However, this mode is not optimized for performance. Profile mode is a middle ground that provides some optimizations while still allowing developers to analyze performance metrics. This mode is useful for profiling app performance without the full optimizations of release mode. Release mode is intended for production. It compiles the app to native code and optimizes for size and speed, making it suitable for deployment to users. Use this mode when ready for public distribution. 20. How do you implement custom animations in Flutter? To implement custom animations in Flutter, you can use the animation controller and tween classes. First, create an animation controller which manages the animation's duration and state. Then, define a tween that specifies the range of values for the animation. Use the animation object to listen for changes and update the UI accordingly. Wrap the animated widget with an animated builder, which rebuilds whenever the animation changes. You can also use the curved animation class to add easing effects. Custom animations enhance the user experience by adding fluidity and engagement to the interface. 21. What is the purpose of the setState method in Flutter? The setState method in Flutter is used to notify the framework that the internal state of a widget has changed. When this method is called, it triggers a rebuild of the widget, allowing it to reflect the updated state on the screen. This is crucial for maintaining the dynamic nature of Flutter applications, where user interactions can lead to changes in the UI. By calling setState, developers ensure that any changes to the widget's data are visually represented enabling a responsive and interactive user experience. It's important to use this method judiciously to optimize performance. 22. How do you handle user input and form validation in Flutter? In Flutter, user input can be managed using text field or text form field widgets. These widgets allow users to enter data, and they can be wrapped in a form widget to facilitate validation. To validate input, 
you can define validation logic using the validator property of text form field. The global key less than form state greater than can be utilized to manage the form state and access validation methods. Call validate on the form state to trigger validation when the user submits the form. If the input is valid, you can process it, otherwise, display error messages. 23. Explain the concept of streams in Dart and how they are used in Flutter. Streams in Dart provide an asynchronous sequence of data. They allow you to listen for events over time, making it possible to handle data that arrives at different intervals. In Flutter, streams are commonly used for managing data flow, such as receiving updates from an API, user actions, or events. You can use Stream Builder widget to listen to a stream and rebuild your UI whenever new data arrives. This enables efficient handling of real-time data, enhancing user experience with dynamic updates without blocking the main thread. 24. What are Flutter's layout constraints and how do they work? Flutter's layout constraints are a set of rules that dictate how widgets can be sized and positioned within their parent widgets. Each widget receives a set of constraints from its parent, which defines the minimum and maximum width and height. The layout process involves the following steps. Each widget uses its constraints to determine its size, then it passes its own constraints to its children. This cascading system allows for flexible and responsive designs, enabling widgets to adapt based on surroundings. Proper understanding of these constraints is essential for effective UI development in Flutter. 25. How do you implement internationalization and localization in a Flutter app? To implement internationalization, I18N, and localization, L10N, in a Flutter app, start by adding the Flutter underscore localizations package in your pubspec, YAML file. Next, create a L10N directory to store your localization files, typically in JSON or ARB format. Use the international package for managing translations. Define supported locales in your app's material app widget using the localization's delegates and supported locales properties. Finally, access localized strings in your widgets using the international message method. This setup allows your app to adapt its content based on the user's locale settings. In this video, we've explored the top 25 Flutter interview questions and answers that can help you prepare for your next job opportunity. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced developer, understanding these key concepts can give you a significant edge in your interviews. Remember, preparation is crucial, and being well-versed in these questions can boost your confidence. If you found this content helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful videos on Flutter and other development topics. Your support keeps us motivated to create more valuable content for you. Thank you for watching.